So let's take a look at this problem. Uh, it starts off and it says that we have a wall crane that supports a load of 900 pounds. So we look at it and over here is our load of 900 pounds. And we see that this is our wall. And so everything must be part of the cranes attached to the wall to support that. Uh, the jib ABC has a weight of 100 pounds. So we take a look at this part A to B to C. That's our jib part, ABC, and it has a weight of 100 pounds. And remember, B to D has a weight of 40 pounds. So here's a going from B to D. So that member has weight 40 pounds. Okay. Each member is uniform and has a center of gravity at its center. Well, We've done that before in physics, so for this member from B to D, it would be right in the middle, and that's where you would have the weight of this member, B to D, which is uh, 40 pounds. Likewise, if I take a look at A, B, C, uh, point B is right in the middle, isn't it? It's four foot over, four foot over, so right here would be the weight of that member A, B, C, which has uh, 100 pounds. Okay. Now, the, uh, the weight of that member isn't really connected to the pin, connected to the link that goes up to B to D. It's just the bar, okay, the horizontal bar. Okay, neglect the diameter of the pulleys. How many pulleys do we see? We see a pulley at B, we see a pulley at C, and we see a pulley at E. What do you mean by neglect the diameter of the pulleys? Well, they've exaggerated the diameter of the pulleys, uh, given the size of everything, but uh, they didn't give no dimensions, so it's as if the, the pulley goes smaller and smaller and smaller until it's really a dot at point B. Then, think about it, if we neglect the diameter of the pulley, where does this cable really go to? It really goes like that, straight through B, doesn't it? And then they know that we show this above the member, but it would be like right through this, and then down and down, very tight, very small pulleys, and likewise right here. Okay. Now, let me clean this up a little bit. Determine the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction at pins A and D. So we find our pin at A, we find our pin at D, and we find the horizontal and vertical components of the reaction. We've done this before. So we would cut it free from the surroundings, and when we did, we would replace this surroundings by um, e either like this, dx and dy, and uh, ax and ay as the reacting uh, forces at those a and d, that which support it. Okay, and then last sentence, what is the tension in the cable? So this cable right here has a given tension in it. It's the same. It goes around a frictionless pulley. So that's the same tension over here and the same tension over there. So we have five things to solve for. We want to find the AX and AY. We want to find DX and DY. And we want to find the tension in the cable. How about this? Have you developed enough skill to figure out how to solve for one of those five unknown? And uh, can I just give you a minute to digest this problem? I'll, I'll walk around and when you solve for one of those five unknown, let me know. <clears throat> well, okay. Well, what, the first one to solve for is the tension in the cable. And we see that uh, this pulley at that's connected at B, that pulley at C, and this pulley at E, they're all our traditional pulleys. They're all frictionless. That means the tension as we go around that cable doesn't change. So if somebody said, what's the tension right here in this part of the cable? Well, it's the same cable. It has the same tension value. How about down here? Same tension value, same tension value, right? So what we do is we come in and we're going to say we're going to do a free body diagram of this pulley and occlude the hook, which has the load of 900 pounds on it. 
and we get really good at drawing off. We isolate and we say, okay, here's our pulley. And we had to cut through the cable, so that gives us a tension force pulling up. We had to cut through the cable, giving us a tension force pulling up. And then, you know, you could be a little more accurate if you like, but then we have the 900 pound force down. Why do I have two T's up? Some people I looked at and they said, well, I think it's uh, 900 pounds. The tension in the cable is 900 pounds. Is it? What's the tension in the cable now? Can you see the number? We do the equilibrium. The sum of the forces and the Y must equal to zero. We have two tensions up. We have 900 pound weight down. The tension is 450 pounds. And yes, uh, you will need to be able to do that, you know, to really convince a skeptic. No, no, it's not 900 pounds. No, this angle of 60 degrees doesn't affect the answer. Think about it. Somebody said, no, I'm going to put it like this so the motor is straight down and it's perpendicular so it's 90 degree angle. Will that change the tension in the cable? No. Let's say we say, no, we're going to bolt this motor a little higher so that the, the, it goes like this. So that angle is only uh, 30 degrees instead of 60 degrees. Will that change the tension in the cable? No, will not. Okay. So there is the first step we've solved for the tension in the cable of 90 pounds. Now we take a look, and uh, we've done a few of these before, so we count our unknowns that remain 1, 2, 3, 4, and if we did a free body diagram of the entire system, we would get at most in 2D, three equations. You will not be able to solve for it. Maybe if you're really clever, you might get one or two of the unknowns solved for. But in this problem, I don't think you'll get any of the unknowns solved for. But we do want to get a free body diagram of the entire system. I would cut through here. I would cut through there. I'd cut through there. I'd include the weight. I'd come up here. I'd include everything. And so the only thing I had to cut through was the tension in the cable pulling that way, T, downward at that given angle. And then we have the AX, AY, DX, DY. And you could play with it a little bit. Over here is our load of 900 pounds. And we did have our weight. Forgot to include that. That was 100 pounds. And we did have another weight. I'm going to put it like that, 40 pounds. So we had like um, uh, four, 40 pounds, 100 pounds, 900 pounds loads on the system. Then we had the tension in the cable and then the reactions AX, AY, and then DX and DY. Well... We're not going to be able to solve for the remaining four unknowns by just the entire free body diagram. So what do we do? We go inter interior. We, we get free body diagrams of the parts. It's, it's just like we had our truss, but these are trusses that are not made up of two force members. That doesn't make sense. They're, they're what we call frames and machines. Okay. So if we take a look, can you get a free body diagram of member, I don't know, A... Let's do the easy one, B to D. Can you get a free body diagram of member <clears throat> DB? What will it look like? Okay, then once we get that free body diagram, we want to get a free body diagram of member, I'm going to call it ABC, like the textbook calls it, the ABC component. All right. Should I... Just proceed? Or do you want to have some time to try and solve it yourself? In the interest of time, let me just solve it. Okay. So we would try to redraw that member, BDE, as close as possible. We put our reactions on it. We had the DX and uh, put it up here going DY. We have our weight going down of 40 pounds. And then down here, we're going to have some reaction at the pin. And you can try to figure out which way it's going to be. Does that pin exert a force on member uh, DB in the positive X or negative X? Or you just pick the direction. I'm going to just pick the direction. There's the positive direction for BX and then BY. What exactly is BX? There's a pin at that connection, and it exerts a force 
on the member D to B as the way I've shown it with this free body diagram in the positive X direction. Now, when you come over to this other member, A, B, C, you're going to have to assume, okay, this is my A, X. This is my A, Y. This is my weight of 100 pounds down for that member right in the middle. And then there's a number of choices uh, that you can make. Either you can include the pulley at B and include the pulley at C, probably pretty easy to do it that way, or you can actually go and just do the pin that goes to connect the pulley at B and the pin that connects the pulley at C. There's a couple choices here. Let me do this. I think it may be this way, is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on how I'm going to cut that member free from the, everything else. So I'm going to cut through the cable. I'm going to cut through the pin. That, those are pretty obvious there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut through this member right there, really at B, where the pin is connected right there. But I'm not going to, I'm going to include the pulley and I'll include that cable part. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to cut the cable and then cut the cable so all of pulley C is in and all of pulley B is in. And then I come down here and I finish it by, there you go. That, so when I would put in my free body diagram, I would put over here a T down and a T down. And they're really at the same location because we're neglecting the diameter of all pulleys. So they're really just two D T down. Somebody says, well, well why didn't you uh, make your free body diagram such that it came around and then went all the way down? And then wouldn't it just be one load of 900 pounds down? Isn't that the same? Yes, it is the same. Two T's down, 450 each, or one 900 down. Either way, it works. Okay. Um, I think on the next slide I have two T's down, so let me leave it as T and T down. All right. Now, because I didn't cut this cable right here, I don't have that on my free body diagram. But I do come over and I did cut that pin. And because that pin was the same pin that joined the member B to D in, I have to do equal and opposite. So here, BY is going to be down because it's positive up on the other part, the other component of my frame. And then likewise, this is BX in that direction. They have to be equal and opposite. Okay. And then we have our tension in our cable because we did cut our cable. And we have our weight. Our weight is 100 pounds. Okay. So I pause and I look. Does the free body diagram for member B to D look okay? And does the free body diagram for member A, B, C look okay? Yes, sir. I might get a question there. That's not a, go ahead. So since you're just talking about the pin at B, you don't hmm. have to think about the compression and tension at D, B to incorporate the um, pin at D, B to add everything. Okay, if, if there wasn't a 40 pound weight, for associated with this member going from D to B, it would be a two-force member and would simplify this problem. But because it has a weight, now I have a force in the middle, center of gravity, force at the two pinned ends, it's not a two-force member, so I can't have it only in tension or compression. Yeah. All right, any other comments? I think this is good. Okay, so now that I have those, now I look at it and I have, uh, just do your, I think I've tried to encourage you to do your counting. I have four unknowns, but now I have two free body diagrams, so I can get three equations here and three equations there. But I did grow the, increase the number of unknowns because I added BX and BY, didn't I? So really I have six six unknowns. And just like somebody gets good at looking at a problem and saying, ah, I think I can get the tension in the cable pretty fast for this complicated problem, you will need to 
as you solve more problems, develop the skill of saying, I have six unknowns. I don't want six equations all very dense. I want to be able to surgically come in and solve for one or two or three of those at a time. So focus on member A, B, C. If you focus on member A, B, C, and you think about doing the sum of the moments about a particular point, you can then get one equation with one unknown. One of the, the equation, the unknown will be, again, I'm going to summarize, AX, AY, BX, BY, or DX, DY. Do you see it? Some of the moments on member ABC about a particular point will allow me to solve for one of those six unknowns. Which one is it? If you do the sum of the moments around point B, very good. If you do the sum of the moments around point B equal to zero for that member, what do you pick up? You pick up only AY times that moment arm distance, and I scrolled down, but you have a sheet of paper in front of you. Isn't that moment arm distance four foot? Yeah. And doesn't it make it want to rotate in the clockwise around point B? Okay. And then we have two tensions. So we have uh, two Ts, two 450 pound forces, and that moment arm distance is four foot, and it also makes it want to rotate in the clockwise. So I'm just going to say that both of those make it want to rotate in the clockwise, but they have to sum to zero. And we can now solve for AY. What did we get? Negative 900 pound force. Now we know that, hell, if we would have been a little more insightful, we should have maybe picked our direction for AY opposite of what it is on our free body diagram. But I'll emphasize again, resist the temptation at this point to change your free body diagram. You put your all your forces down for the global free body diagram of the entire structure. For each member, they're all consistent. Just live with it and stay with it. Don't change the free body diagram. So at this point, you could come up and put negative 900 pound in your list up there. Okay, so we solved for AY. Let's do the sum of the forces in either the X or the Y on member ABC to solve for another unknown. Which one do you want to attack? Sum of the forces in the Y. And that will allow us to calculate BY. Okay, so sum of the forces in the Y. So we're going to have AY positive upward, just looking at my free body diagram. And then we're going to have minus BY because it's downward. And we're going to have minus 100 pounds because that's downward. And then this angle uh, right here is 60 degrees. So it's the T minus T times the sine of 60 degrees to pick off the, 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 the Y component. And then we're going to have minus two T's uh, because of the downward um, tension at the end, at C, that point where the pulley is at C. And that must equal to zero. And we know the T, the T is 450. And so we solve for AY. No, not AY, BY. And when we solve for BY, we get negative 2,290 pounds. Let me see if a few of you can verify that for me. You got a thumbs up? Thank you. Any, just a few more thumbs up if you can verify that. Negative 2290. You are fast, Michelle. You're getting ahead of us. That's good. One more. Good. Did you guys get it? You got it? Okay, good. Thank you very much. So I would come up here to our list. I'm going to have to scroll up. And, oh, you know what? BY was internal, so it wasn't really part of the final answer, was it? So, okay, but it's internal. Now, at this point, if I look at it, I can write the sum of the forces in the X, but it's not going to give me one equation, one unknown. So I'm going to jump to the other part. And then I'm going to jump to the other part, and I'm going to say, okay, for member BD now, I, I come in knowing AY, and I BY, 
So right here, maybe I put in right here that this BY is known to be negative 2290 pound. Which, what can I do? Some of the moments, some of the forces, what, do, what would you recommend to solve for one of the unknowns? I need exactly some of the forces in the Y. I should have put this 40 pound down here a little closer so to that weight. So I'm going to kind of show it down here. Sum of the forces in the Y equal to zero. So it's like I, I started here, then I went here, then I go over here. And when I solved some of the forces in the Y, we're able to find that DY is equal to 2330 pounds. You got it? Thank you. You got it? Thank you. Anybody else get it? Two, I, I, I'm just trying to speed up a little bit here. Do you want me to write the equation out to solve for dy? Is good? Okay. I would then do this. Once I solve it, I would come back up here and I'd put dy in my list, 2330 oh. three, pounds, because sometimes I forget, oh, I already solved for that unknown and I, I end up going in circles in my analysis. So I solve for that unknown, I put it in my list, I come back down, and then guess what? Do the sum of the moments around point D equal to zero. If you do the sum of the moments around point D equal to zero, you will be able to solve for BX. And BX will come in at 2310 pound. Let me pause to see if a few people can reproduce that. So we're going to do the sum of the moments around this point D, right up here. That's point D. Are you able to solve for BX? All right. Well, once you solve for BX and come up here, uh, actually, that's internal, so I don't need to put it in my list for my final answers. And then uh, you can do the sum of the forces in the x equal to zero. That allows me to solve for dx. dx is negative 2310 pound. And then finally, we, we, we come over to the last equation, which is for this member over here, the sum of the forces in the x equal to zero, which allows me to solve for... Um, AX and AX comes in at um, AX comes in at 2535 pounds so I'm going to uh, jump over here I think I have a summary on this very last slide yeah so my AX was 2535 pounds. My AY was negative uh, 900. DX, negative 2310. And DY, 2330. And the tension was 450. Here I show where the AX, AY, dx and dy are. A lot of times I encourage you to stop just for a minute. Okay, let's say the pin at A broke. Okay, because this high 900 pound load is out here and it's pulling down on this stiff member that goes from A all the way out. If it broke, do you think that the whole system would rotate that way? Would this member over at A fall? Or would the, would the whole member rotate around point B that way if, if, if this pin at A broke and it wouldn't be supported at the wall anymore? Yeah, it would go clockwise. And that, that's why this AY, look at the value of AY, it's negative 900 pounds. It's having to hold it down. And if the pin breaks, it can't support it by pulling it down at a magnitude of 900 pounds. Hence, the member rotates, as you just said, clockwise. So things like that. The other is, let's say uh, 
um, this whole wall just sort of vanished. Would this part right here, it's still pinned at B, would it rotate out that way? Would this whole frame move further away you know, from the wall? Or would it rotate that way toward the wall? It would rotate back toward the wall, right? If somehow the wall and the pin at A vanished. Well, see, that's why AX is positive and it's p pushing out. And if it's unable to push out, then the whole structure is going to go that way if the wall at A sort of collapsed and went away. So you could start making physical sense of, oh yeah, AX is positive, large value, AY is negative, etc. You can do that for this problem. All right, let's jump to another problem. <clears throat> 